Good evening. This is our live Zoom meeting for our web development class. And we are in week four. And what I want you to go over this evening is media queries, how to not only set them up, but how to test that they are being read before you start writing rules. So here, and I'm using the assignment web page as a demo that should look a little familiar to you. We've used this in a couple classes. So um, I am at a very large monitor resolution, like pr pretty much 2100 across. And I do not have any media queries per se written in this um, web page yet. However, I did start with my testing. So you will see some color changes. But what the goal is, the goal is to change different aspects of our web page based on the screen size. So as I slowly change my monitor resolution here, you see the content does not look good. It starts looking very poor. And a lot of times, people will develop media queries based on the sizes of the device, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, you should think more about changing based on the content, when the content needs to change. So when things start looking bad, that is, should cue you into, okay, we need to set a break point at this uh, size and change the content because you can see it's overlapping. One, one giveaway will always be this horizontal scroll bar at the bottom. You can tell that a website is not optimized or not for mobile or not made responsive when you start seeing that horizontal scroll bar. All right, so what I have in Adobe Brackets in this uh, assignment at the bottom, and the media queries belong at the bottom. Here I have a starter. And because we're starting from a large, already existing website scaling down, we are going to use the max width property. And I have two breakpoints set here. One's for 1024 pixels and one's for 768. And I believe that's what the assignment uses also. So here we have the app media directive. So this is a CSS directive. And this is the opening delimiter. And you can see on the left um, that it is the closing delimiter is also highlighted. So all of the media, all of the styles go in here. So what we're doing is we're overwriting the existing CSS to ch make some changes. There may be some occasions where you might add some new selectors, but generally speaking, the CSS, the layout is already set for you. And so therefore, when you need to change something, you need to go back and use the original selector where it was set or it's not going to work. And the reason for that is all of this is inherited. Uh, these, this media query will inherit everything on top of it except any styles that we overwrite. This second media query will inherit everything on top of it, including what's in inside this media query, um, unless we overwrite it. So you have to keep that in mind. And also, when you're using max width, you always go from highest to lowest. If you do the reverse, you may run into some problems due to the pro this issue of inheritance. So what I have here, I am setting a background color to red as my test. So when I see that background color change, I know that I have entered my 1024 breakpoint. In my 768 breakpoint, I am setting the background color to green. Now, where is that background color being set in the regular page? It's up here, it's pound logo. And the background color is, is it a dark navy. So if we look at the website here, this is 
up here. This dark navy is the background color that I'm using as my test because it's very easy for me to see. It's right up front. So as I start changing, you can see I have not yet gone into 1024. I start moving. There we go. There's my first break point. This is 1024. And as I go in further, I can see, all right, there's my next 768. It just changed to green. That's the first thing I always do. I test that I can access those media queries. Similar to in JavaScript, I test that I can call that function by throwing in an alert. Because if I can't see where my breakpoint is, it's no use in writing style rules for it because the chances are they're not going to work. Another thing that I like to do, and there are a lot of tools on the internet, and I have given you some URLs. This is, um, let me see, where did I write this down? How big is my browser.com? And this is a very interesting tool because it show, can show you exactly what your browser resolution is. So here I'm at 116. So you don't have to do a whole lot of guesswork. There are also a lot of browser extensions, and I'm using Chrome. Chrome has a lot of nice extensions that are built into the browser to help you work with media queries, testing them and seeing where you are. However, I don't have any extensions installed, so I'm using websites. So now, if I, if I wanted to determine at what point should I go into 1024, now I see where I turned red, and oh yeah, that's 1014, my breakpoint was 1024, so you can see I've just entered into that breakpoint. Now the reason I chose the 768 as, as the point from which to change my layout is because this is where the navigation starts looking bad. Notice the navigation still looks okay, and at this point, we're pretty much in a tablet or a very small computer, and you can see the navigation, there you go. At this point, it pretty much fits 100%, so you can tell we need to change it. Obviously, we need to change our boxes, too. Um, and how big is my browser? There you go. That was 768. There are also some tools built right into Chrome. So if I go to my toolbar and I go down to more tools and they're in my developer tools and I can just hit the F12 key to, to access them. And up here on the menu bar to the left of elements, there's this little device um, to toggle here and you can actually see what your page might look like at a different um, resolution. So I can actually there, I'm clicking, and for a split second, you can see what the, um, the width the width is there. And you can actually go in here and change it. So if I wanted to change it to 480 by, um, what is the opposite of 480? I'm not sure what that is. I'll just say 200 for now, and I hit the Enter key. That's what it's going to look like at 480. So there are some built-in tools also. Now, another thing that we have or that I have already put in here into my code is the meta viewport tag. So if we go up to the very top, this is what we need. And what that does, that enables the resolution to match the resolution of the actual screen on the smaller devices. If you don't have this in there, what's the the phone will try to fit the whole website inside it and it will be so so small that you can hardly see it and it's not really usable so when you start developing a, your media query sorry that's the wrong browser the first thing you want to do is you want to work essentially from the outside in so what we're going to do at 1024 and we're coming on to that there's our our red so this is our tablet. Think of an iPad in portrait view. 
and we want everything to fill the screen up. We don't have a problem up here because this is a fixed width header. And next week I'm going to talk about navigation and images. But on, on a tablet or a small computer, we don't need this margin. We don't need all of this. We don't need this to be boxed in. Uh, we also can get rid of these social icons. They're, re they're really kind of in the way at this point. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to work with that. We have two columns down here, and they're going to be okay for a while. So there's just a couple of changes that we're going to make initially. So first we have to look at our HTML and determine where is this in our HTML document? Where do I see this layout? So if I go down to my HTML here, here's my fixed width banner. So that's not the problem. These are my social icons that we're probably going to get rid of. And everything is inside this div ID equals outer. That's my main container. So if you go up to the CSS and you want to find pound outer, there it is. So this is the outer container, and this is what we're going to do. The first thing, we're going to override these styles. We're not going to create a new selector and write new styles. We're going to take this selector. We're going to change the width, the margin, and the border. The background color is already changed as test. And that's only as a test. After you're finished, you can just um, comment it out. All right, so I need a selector for pound outer. So I'm going to go down into my first media query, and I'm going to code in. And the first thing I want to do, I want to get rid of the width. We had a fixed width. That's the first thing you do. You get rid of all those fixed widths and change everything to a percent. And in this case, it's going to be 100%. So now I'm changing the width to 100%. And it's not a bad idea to test one thing at a time and take a look. So if I save my document here, and now I reload my page, now you can see that I'm pretty much 100% there. Now I still have to get rid of this margin, I still have to get rid of the border. So let's take a look again at our initial CSS up here. So we have a 50 pixel margin on the top and bottom, and we're set to auto on the sides, that's fine. We can change all of this to zero pixels, and we're gonna remove the border altogether. So I need a margin property and a border property. And if I wanted to just copy these in and change them, that would work. So I'm going to go down now to my media query, and there's my width. I'll just move this over. And I'm going to just change everything on all four sides to zero pixel. And now I'm going to change the border to none. So if I save this and I go back, now here's what it looks like now. And I reload. Now we see it's going to look a lot nicer in a tablet if everything is all moved up and all 100% width. And notice there is no more horizontal scroll bar. So it looks almost okay up until green. Up until we hit the next break point, we have no horizontal scroll bars. The navigation looks okay. Our two boxes look okay here. We will get rid of these social icons next. Now, one thing that we're going to we notice that, yes, here the navigation is a little too big. We'll work with that later. But we're going to see that at this point, we need to change our boxes to stack on top of each other. And we're also going to need to change our columns down here because eventually they're going to look not good. 
All right. So let's take let's get rid of these social icons. They're not needed at all on a smaller device. And here they are, and they are set using the CSS selector pound social. And to, to verify that, I will go up here. Here it is, pound social. We're just going to get rid of this 100% altogether. So I will create another selector. So essentially, all we're doing is writing new CSS properties. The only thing is that these selectors already exist, and we're overwriting the original properties. Or, or we're doing something else. Here, I am not necessarily overwriting a property. I am just setting the display property to none. And this is how you get rid of things. There may be times when something is not needed on a smaller device. And setting the CSS display property to none removes it from the flow. So if I save this and I go back and I reload, now it's gone. So. Now we'll move on to our next media query. And as I said earlier, these styles are inherited. So if you look to the left, my 768 um, breakpoint, the, the styles on top, the styles set for pound outer and the styles set for pound social, they're being inherited down here. You don't see the social icons anymore. And you also see that my outer is all 100%. There's no border. There's no margins. So you, you do not have to repeat these because what is underneath is going to be inherited from what is on top. Unless you don't want it to be inherited, then you need to override it. So the first thing we're going to do here, let's, get rid, let's change the layout of these two boxes. And when you're creating media queries for smaller devices, the general t thing that you do is to change your widths to 100% or to a percentage, depending on how the layout originally was, and getting rid of floats. So we have a float left and a float right here in my two boxes. So by getting rid of those floats, we're going to stack these things on top of each other. However, we'll still need to do some work, and you'll see that shortly. So I'm going to do one thing at a time. The first thing I'm going to do is go into my HTML and take a look at where these items are. All right, so here's my aside, and the ID is news. However, inside that, I have two IDs, news1 and news2. So these are my CSS selectors, and I'm going to go up and take a look at what is set in my existing CSS document. Now here's for news, I have a top margin. We will get rid of that later. But first of all, here's news one and news two. These are just some styles. However, you can see that we do have a width of 30% and we have some margins. A little bit further down, we see there's news one with a float left, news two with a float right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to override those floats, and we're going to set the float to none. There is always a way to undo a CSS property, by the way. So I can create let me just scroll down a little bit more. I will create pound news one comma pound news two. Now this is a grouping selector. It means these styles are going to apply to both of them because they both have a float set and I just want to set the float to none. So if I save that and now I reload, Oh, I spelled it wrong. They're news, not new, new, news. All right, that's why it didn't work. Okay. There we go. All right, doesn't look good. This is why you do one thing at a time. Just like when you develop your document, do one thing at a time, 
maybe a few things together so that you see what's going on. All right, so we need to work with the widths and we need to put a bottom margin. We can put it on both of them. So if we set the width, and I'm going to set the width to 80%. Now, the reason I'm setting the width to 80% here is because originally we had the width set to 30% for both of them, as you can see. However, we had a 10% on the margins. And these don't really need to be flush to the left and right. So we'll keep that 10% on the right and left, which leaves us with 80% for a total of 100% across. So if I go back down to my media query, there's my width. And if I save this and I reload, looking better, we're just going to put a little space, a little margin on bo both of these. So now I'm going to put a bottom margin. And I can just do 10 pixel. 10 pixel will probably work. And now we have a nice little separation point. You can put a little more if you wanted to. When you're working with media queries, you don't necessarily have to convert everything to percents. Now, some people do. And there's, you know, so there's some debate over which is the, the best way to go. However, when you're working with values 10, 10, 5, 15, 20 pixels, it's probably not going to really make a difference changing that small a value to a percent on a smaller device. So you're probably going to be safe working with pixels. However, anything above that, you probably do want to change it to a percent. Now, we also have this margin. Remember, this was wrapped in an ID of news with a margin up here. We're going to get rid of this margin next. So if we go up to our original styles, here's where this is set. We have a top margin. So I'm just going to copy this style in. This is a different selector. Both of those boxes are inside an outer container and that's the ID. So I'm going to paste this into my media query. Let me move that over. And I'll set this to 10 pixel, give it a little bit of space. Let me save that. Let me reload. All right, so now we see when you're working on a smaller device, you want to, you don't want to waste space. You want to try to utilize as much space as possible without making it look ugly. So here again, we probably could increase this to 20 pixels. That is a little squashed. So. And this is what you do. You just kind of go back and forth and see what works and keep on adjusting. So this looks nice. And this will scale very nicely for a phone. And if we, if we test how big we are right now, there we are. We're at 460. So if we go down a little bit more, that's probably close to 320. That's 390. All right, let's go down a little bit further. All right, so this is a little smaller than a phone. Phones are generally 320. And when I say they're generally 320, I know that they're getting bigger, but internally they respond to that, those breakpoints. They respond to them. So this is a smartphone here, and you can tell it looks pretty nice. Now, these are something that you might want to change later on. You can go in and you can change your font sizes. These are the little details. All these little details can get worked on later. What I want to really focus on is the major things. As I said, walk, work from the outside in. The fine little details, all the fonts can work later. One thing that I think probably doesn't look good on a smaller device is our columns here. <laughs> so that's the next thing we're going to work on. Even at this resolution, you can see those columns are starting to wrap and it doesn't look all that nice. So here again on your smaller devices, 
the consensus is to eliminate columns. Now, these, th these are not floats. This was done with the column count property. So if we go into our HTML, and let's take a look at where those columns are. Here they are, and we have this ID URLS. So that's the selector that we're using. And let's take a look at our original CSS up here. Here we are. There's our column count. So what we're going to do, I'm going to just copy this whole rule and I'll paste it into my media query and I'm going to overwrite the um, values. So here we are in my media query. I'll go to home and let me move this over. All right. So I'm going to change the column count to one. And I don't want a column rule at all, so I'm going to set that to none. This is column rule property. It's very similar to a border. If you don't want it, you could just set it to none. Here again, every CSS property has a value that allows you to remove that property or set it back to its default. So here, if I reload, and I'm going to scroll down, there we go. It looks a lot nicer, and the smaller we get, how small are we here? Oh, we're almost on a phone. We're at 330, four, close enough. So we're pretty much, well, we have a little bit of wrapping. So some things you just can't avoid because that's the way the URL is. Here again, you could probably adjust the font size if you were to think that would have been a problem. All right, so this is, an example of how you work with media queries. Taking a look at what needs to change, we need to get rid of this fix with here, and we need to expand everything, get rid of the margins, get rid of the lines, get rid of things we don't need. And and testing little by little. And as I said, using our colors so that we know when the breakpoint has successfully changed. And again, there are a lot of nice tools that can help you. So here it's. It's showing me where I am right now. So if I were to change this, notice we're changing. And it's trying to show me what it's going to look like. I think I can scroll down. There we go. Oh, here we go. There we go. All right. So this is, this is not even an extension. This is right in, in my... My developer tools, here we are, F12, the F12 developer tools. So you can go right into your browser and you can see how things look. And the rule of thumb is when things don't look good, when they start looking poor, that's when you need to establish a breakpoint and make some changes. And you generally only need two or three breakpoints. Now, these are very common breakpoints because they are the resolution of our popular tablets. So, another interesting website, Resize My Browser. And for the life of me, I, this is not working the way it used to work for me, but it just shows you these are the popular resolutions of a lot of the devices that we have. And these are a lot of the breakpoints that people might use. Here again, you don't necessarily need to use them all. Two or three generally work well. All right, so I'm going to stop the recording.